What should I eat and what should I avoid? And it doesn't have to be so controversial. Nutrition is a very controversial subject. There's more opinions about it than pretty much anything else. I think between religion, politics, and nutrition, uh, you've got the most controversial areas in life. And it, the truth is we know a lot. Uh, that, that it doesn't have to be so controversial. And there may be disagreements about the ed around the edges of nutrition science, but for the most part, it's a pretty well-established field where most people really agree. And people bring up controversy in order to actually sell stuff. But I think we need to understand that there are certain principles that are universal. And I found what those are, particularly in my travels around the blue zones, which are the areas in the world where people live the longest. When I discovered about nutrition there was fascinating. And also what I discovered about the science of how to eat, of when to eat and what to eat in order to live a long, healthy life. So the question is, what should I eat and what should I avoid? Uh, I've, I've written lots of books about this, uh, from food, what the heck should I eat to eat fat, get thin to the blood sugar solution, to the vegan diet, to the ultra simple diet, to the 10 day detox diet. I mean, you're probably sick of me by now, but I think I've distilled all of it in this book, Young Forever, which is really important, which is answering the question, what should I eat for longevity? Now, I've been studying this for decades and I studied, I saw actually, I think I first uh, came across uh, the whole idea of nutrition and disease when I was in college. I read a book called Nutrition Against Disease over 40 years ago, that's a long time ago. <laughs> and it highly influenced my thinking. And I've been on this path ever since. Um, and the the truth is that there are, there are, are really important principles that we can agree on that are foundational. Um, we need to kind of personalize nutrition. It's not that one size fits everybody, but there are a few universal principles. First is whatever you're eating, focus on quality. You know, the highest quality food is going to create the highest quality input to your biology. If you're running, for example, your car on dirty fuel, it's not going to run well. If you run on premium gas, it's going to run better. So what is a premium gas for our bodies? It's high quality food, which is defined in my view as the nutrient density of the food. So that's phytochemical richness, the fiber, the vitamins and minerals, the quality of the fats, the quality of the protein, the quality of the carbohydrates, the quality of all the things that are in our food really matter. And, and that's because food is information and it's literally sending instructions with every bite to regulate every function of your body, including the biological process of aging. The second thing is when you eat, think about your food as medicine, not just calories. Think of it as actually medicine that's going to heal or harm you. Uh, and it can be good medicine or bad medicine. So make sure you're thinking about your food as medicine. And we'll talk about what that means. And also personalize your approach because we're all different. We're all different genetically, metabolically. We're different in terms of our preferences, our culture, what we like, what we don't like. It's important to personalize your approach to diet. There's no one size fits all. So, and also, by the way, uh, your needs for in change over time, your needs change as you age. So it's important to make sure you focus on what works. Now, I, I jokingly called my approach to eating the pegan diet, which was basically a joke because there were so many diet wars and I was on a panel with a cardiologist who was a vegan, another doctor was a paleo doctor and they were fighting. I'm like, wow, if you're vegan and you're paleo, I must be pegan. Everybody laughed, thought it was a good joke. But then I realized it's... <laughs> It has some staying power because they're really the same in terms of their principles, except for where you get protein, right? Eat quality, lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of nuts and seeds, good quality fats, you know, no processed food, sugar and starch are not so great for you. You know, really simple principles that we can all agree on. And, and the whole idea is that it's an inclusive, flexible framework that's built on quality, principles is based on the you know, food is medicine and based on personalization. And it's designed to be low glycemic, low in starch and sugar, because those drive aging, as we talked about in the last podcast, Don Young Forever. Uh, it's rich in good fats, which we need for our health. It's anti-inflammatory. It's detoxifying. It balances your hormones. It boosts your meta metabolic health and energy. It heals your gut and microbiome. These are things we know how to do with food. We can we know what foods are detoxifying, which foods are anti-inflammatory, which foods help your microbiome, which foods balance your hormones. It's not that hard. We have the science of this. So you want a nutrient-dense diet that's rich in a whole host of phytochemicals that we now know are critical in activating some of these longevity switches and pathways in the body. Things like polyphenols and antioxidants and also things that help our microbiome, which is really important. So we can eat foods that regenerate human health and also planetary health, which are really not separable. 
I mean, we, we really have to understand our bodies are part of the earth. We are the earth, the earth is us. And if we're growing food, that's destroying the planet, that food's also destroying us. Think of like all the cornfields and the processed soy and the, and the you know, immense amounts of, of ultra processed food that comes from wheat, corn, and soy that are killing us, but also harming the planet by our industrial agriculture. So <clears throat> it's all, all, all these are principles are, are really important in terms of, of what we should be eating. So um, let's talk about what we should eat from the plant world. Well, pretty much everything. <laughs> I mean, our, most of our diet should be plants, lots and lots of plant foods with lots of colors, lots of variety and lots of diversity and even wild foods. So most of your plates should be veggies, 70, 80 percent and lots of colors, right? Non-starchy veggies are the best, but sometimes winter squash, sweet potatoes are fine in moderation if you're not diabetic. Uh, lots of colors, green, blues, purples, yellows, oranges, all that stuff. Um, try organic when you can, regenerative when possible, which is being more available. Eat wild foods when you can, which are way higher in phytochemicals. Uh, use the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 lists from the Environmental Working Group, EWG.org, so you can learn which foods you can consume that aren't all contaminated with pesticides. And some foods like bananas or avocados doesn't matter so much because you can peel them, but things like strawberries are terrible if you eat them that are not organic. Really important. So we can, we can really upgrade our diet by focusing on a nutrient dense, colorful uh, diet full of plants. And I mean, if you can grow your own great, if you go to farmer's market, great. If you can get them from a community supports ag agriculture system, that's great. Um, but the closer they are to their original heirloom forms, the closer they are to uh, being grown in a way that is, is actually regenerative and organic, much, much better for you. Uh, what about fruit? Fruit's great. Fruit isn't bad. It's what you eat um, that's, that's got fructose in it that's not fruit, like high fructose corn syrup that's bad. So, you know, for some of us uh, who are diabetic or very overweight, you got to be careful, more careful with things like, uh, for example, bananas or pineapples or grapes, which are super sugary. You stick with more berries and kiwis, watermelon. Uh, those, those tend to be, be lower glycemic. But make sure you, if you're going to eat fruit, you eat the whole fruit. You don't eat, obviously, an empty stomach or fruit juice, which is terrible because that actually can absorb sugar more. Uh, dried fruit, not a good thing. Uh, for most people, it's like, think of it as candy. It's okay a little bit, but not too much. Um, if you're not sure about how food's affecting you, you can use a continuous glucose monitor and this they're going to become more and more available there's a company called levels that i'm an advisor for and basically wear this patch on your arm and it can measure your blood sugar continuously and you'll be surprised you go, oh god you know i don't know if i eat plums my blood sugar goes off the chart but if i eat a you know a strawberry i'm fine so i think we we can learn a lot about how our individual bodies respond to different things by by using these continuous glucose monitors next up is fat what should we eat in terms of fat well I've written a book about this, Eat Fat, Get Thin. But basically, you want fat from whole foods. Nuts, seeds, avocados, pasture-rich eggs, small fatty fish, like sardines, mackerel, herring, anchovies. Um, certain processed foods are fine. Olive oil is a processed food, extra virgin olive oil, um, you know, made in a special way that doesn't degrade the oil. Important, make sure you don't leave it out in the light. Avocado oil can be used for higher heat cooking. <clears throat> I mean, I think uh, coconut oil can be fine organic extra virgin, but for example, I'm what we call a lean mass hyper responder where I've got very, I'm very lean, but <clears throat> my body doesn't like as much saturated fat. So if I eat too much saturated fat, I spike my cholesterol. And many people don't. I've had people drop their cholesterol hundred points eating a diet of coconut oil and butter. It really depends on your own biology. So it's important to check that. Lots of nuts and seeds. Um, they're great for weight loss, diabetes, heart disease, dementia, um, they're full of minerals. They've got protein. They've got good fats, lots of fiber. What should you eat? Almonds, walnuts, pecans, hazelnuts, macadamia, pumpkin seeds, chia, hemp, sesame seeds, all great. Include those in your diet. Um, if we know, I had a salad the other day. I put avocados. I put olive oil. I put pumpkin seeds in it. Um, what about meat? Uh, well, that's really controversial. I could do a literally a three-hour podcast just on meat. I'm not going to. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> at least not right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, meat is not bad. If you're eating industrial meat, that's bad. If you're eating factory farm meat, that's bad. If you're eating meat or dairy from animals that have been raised in ways that are destroying the environment and the climate, that's bad. But if you're eating meat that's regenerative, if you're eating wild animals, for example, your hunter, deer, or elk, um, 
if you're eating animals that eat more of a natural diet of grass and a wide variety of plants, they actually can be rich in phytochemicals, they can be anti-inflammatory, they can be very important. And it's important to get quality protein as you age because you lose muscle. So it's really critical that you don't have a, a deficit of protein as you get older because one of the keys to longevity is keeping muscle. And the only way to build muscle is with other protein or other muscle. Muscle is the best way to gain muscle, eating muscle, which is essentially meat. So I think it's important. You can actually supplement with plant protein. Uh, plant proteins can work. For example, um, I'm in uh, I'm Costa Rica now, one of the blue zones, and I couldn't find the goat whey protein I like, but they had this plant protein, but it was sort of jacked up. It, it actually it was jacked up with extra amino acids and extra leucine. So it had 30 grams of protein, but it had two and a half grams of leucine, which is important for building muscle. So you can hack plant proteins, but it's much harder to use those for, for building, building uh, muscle. Um, if you're going to eat meat, make sure it's regenerative, grass fed, organic when possible, uh, better for you, better for the planet, more humane. Uh, and, and you can get these now. There's a lot of places, force of nature, wild pastures, uh, North star bison. I mean, you can get a lot of these incredible online services that will ship to you directly and aren't really that expensive. So really important. What about eggs? Eggs are okay. Don't be afraid of eggs, even though they have cholesterol. Uh, that's been debunked. Even the dietary guidelines have gotten rid of that recommendation. They're a great source of protein, vitamins, B12, um, uh, lots of choline, which is great for your brain, liver. Uh, obviously, by pasture-raised eggs when possible, really important. Not pasteurized, but pasture-raised. <laughs> um, what about fish? Fish is great. Unfortunately, we polluted the oceans. Most Fish is full of microplastics and 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 uh, and mercury. There is a company that I recently found out about called Seatopia.fish. Go to Seatopia.fish where they've sourced aquaculture that's regenerative. It's clean fish that's tested for heavy metal. It's super low, so I, I think it's important. There's also small fish you can eat like anchovies, mackerel, herring, um, uh, and and uh, uh, sardines, which people don't like, but I love them. Um, what about, what about grains and beans? Grains and beans are okay, but it depends on your biology. If you are diabetic, if you're massively overweight, if you have trouble with belly fat, you might want to go for a short time without them because they can actually trigger uh, insulin spike. You have to be careful. And you can wear a continuous glucose monitor, see what happens. Oh, I have a cup of rice. What happens? Or I have, you know, pasta. What happens? You can see what happens as you eat these foods instead of just guessing. Uh, and, and, and rather than uh, you know, be connected to some ideology, look at your own biology and find out what's really going on inside of you. So if you're going to eat grains, eat whole grains, not whole grain flours. Like, you know, you can eat black rice, quinoa, teff, uh, buckwheat, Himalayan tartary buckwheat is amazing. You can, you can actually uh, get these ancient forms of wheat, like einkorn wheat, ember wheat, if you're, if you're not gluten sensitive. So lots of these are fine. Be sure not to overdose on them because even you know, a lot of grains can be trouble. If Unless you're just exercising like crazy, then you can tolerate more carbohydrate. Same thing with beans. You know, beans are great. Uh, make sure you cook them right. You need to pressure cook them, soak them. You can cook them with kombu, which is a seaweed that prevents some of the gassy stuff that can go on. Um, they have lectins. They have phytates, which can be modified by how you cook them. Um, but but I think most of the time it's okay to eat beans as part of your diet and a lot of longevity blue zones eat a lot of beans and they're fine like minestrone soup, um, which they eat in Sardinia. What about sugar? Well, sugar is pretty much the devil if you want to live a long time. <laughs> now to say, do I never eat sugar? No, I eat sugar, I promise you. But I make sure I exercise plenty. I eat it in a way that, that minimizes any spike in blood sugar by eating it sort of a, it with food that's got fat and protein and fiber. Um, <clears throat> but be careful. Um, if you are insulin resistant at all, if your insulin level is over five and you can check that with your doctor, you can go to functionhealth.com. That's a company I co-founded to look at lab testing. You can actually measure your, your insulin level, but if it's over five, I'd be very careful with eating too much, um, starch and sugar in your diet. I mean, below the neck, your body can't tell the difference between a bowl of cereal of cornflakes and a you know bowl of sugar. So think of, think of, um, pretty much anything that turns to sugar in the same way. Uh, be careful of liquid sugar calories. They're everywhere, whether it's sodas or caffeinated teas, teas that are sweet teas, uh, coffee with all kinds of junk in it. I mean, it's everywhere. Fruit juice is terrible. Don't drink fruit juice. Um, what about oils? Well, I would encourage people to eliminate most processed oils. Uh, 
I think there's some controversy about this, but you know, if you want to use a little sesame oil or macadamia, walnut oils are fine. Avocado oil is great for cooking, but stay away from canola, safflower, sunflower, grapeseed, corn oil, soybean oil. We, we've not eaten these for most of our evolutionary history, and we should be eating more of our traditional fats, particularly whole food fats, which we talked about. What about dairy? Well, I would say most conventional dairy we should not be eating. Goat and sheep are tend to be better. There's A2 casein, which is a different form of casein in the in the sheep and goat that doesn't cause much inflammation or issues um so you want to you know if you're going to do that most people tolerate that better like goat yogurt sheep yogurt goat cheese sheep cheese if you want to eat dairy a lot of people don't do well on dairy i encourage people often to do an elimination to see how they feel but it can cause congest congestion sinus issues asthma digestive issues acne i mean a lot of stuff so um, make sure, sure you're aware of what you're doing. And also all the nut milks and all that stuff, be careful because those can have a lot of sugar in them. So lastly, let's talk about what we should not eat, right? We shouldn't eat stuff that's not food, right? Packaged food, processed food, all these color size shapes of chemically extruded, in, chemically extruded colorful food-like substances. Just, you know, don't eat them. <laughs> Whether it's Twizzlers or Oreo cookies, they don't grow on trees. Basic rule is if God didn't make it, don't eat it. If man made it, if God, if God, if man made it, probably not a good idea to eat it, right? So uh, I talked about this a lot, but get away from foods with, with pesticides, herbicides, antibiotics, hormones, processed ingredients, chemicals, additives, dyes, artificial sweeteners. They're just, just not good for us. And, and there's no reason to eat them. Uh, and that's really the, the basic foundational principles of nutrition. I encourage you to read my book, The Peak and Diet for More. The Young Forever book is really where I go into how these things affect longevity, particularly what phytochemicals, and we talk about a lot of them, like fisetin uh, in strawberries or epigalactic catechins in green tea or curcumin in turmeric or urolithin A that comes from pomegranate or, or, um, <clears throat> or various things like luteolin and quercetin that come from Himalayan tartary buckwheat. There's all sorts of science about how these phytochemicals interact with our longevity pathways. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. Uh, eating the right kinds of fats and oils actually help you lose weight. In fact, the, uh, there are 53 randomized controlled trials uh, looking at high-fat diets versus low-fat diets. And every time the high-fat diets beat out the low-fat diets for weight loss. 